Hi everyone, so welcome back to this deep motherboard course. So in this course, I'm going to teach you all about EC and ASIO chips. I'm going to teach you how to master EC and ASIO testing, how to locate it in the motherboard, how to check if EC is shorted or not, and much more. So please, if you are serious about improving your repair skills, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified for future videos like this one. And to be part of our family where I have over 1000 friends, you are very welcome. All links in the description. Also, you gonna find in the description the link for a full article in my website about all what we have discussing in this video so please make sure you stay tuned and do not miss any moment if you want to maximize your chance of understanding this course let's get started we have to know first about what are ec and isio means so basically ac or embedded controller manages power button keyboard battery charging and fan this one but for the ace io or super io means input output basically it manages legacy input outputs keyboard mouse temperature and voltage so understanding what these ic's do is step one they are the brain behind power sequencing and communication with the cpu if your board doesn't power on, these two chips are where you should start. Basically, in some other boards, you can just find one chip. Like this one, for example, we have just one chip that gather all chips. So if those chips are failed or just one are failed, you're gonna get no boot, no fan spins, okay? no fan spins and no charging also the battery is not charged are due to this chip in some cases why exactly i focus on these chips because many technicians jump straight to replacing the cpu or the pc head but the real cause is not the cpu or the pc head but those chips so that's why knowing how to test these chips can save time and expensive parts. So now let's go to how to test these chips. Of course, I'm going to use the multimeter. But first, I will give you some tips first. You have to do a visual check, okay? A visual check around all chip pins, both chips, okay? As I told you, sometimes you can find just one chip like this one okay one chip like this one for this chip for example if you focus here here we have a little bit corrosion here in these two pins as you can see so these two pins should be soldered again okay so you have to make sure that all pin chips are good here also in this chip you see we have here a short we have a bended pin for this chip that's why you have to pay attention first to do a visual inspection about all chip pins then move on to voltage check how we check voltage basically we check the v in in the big capacitor around the chip the v in okay we check the three volt and we check the clock okay but in general when you find that three volts are present around the chip means the chip receive inputs and generate outputs i'm going to show you all this just stay tuned so first let's take a look to some other bonds for beginners in order to know first how to locate the chip so basically this kind of, of chipsets in some motherboard as i told you before you can find just one chip in some you can find two chips ec and asio for this one we have just one for this one we have two chips 
For this model, as you can see, we have just one chip near to the BIOS. Okay, near to the BIOS. For this one, we have just one chip. And this one also, we have just one chip. Here we have BIOS. I show you many motherboards just to know about the working principle. Here also in this motherboard, we have, as you can see, one chip BIOS. In this motherboard, basically, we have two chips. It. We have the EC and the Super IO, and we have the BIOS. Okay, so you can find like this one, one chip near to the BIOS, or two chips it near to the BIOS. In this motherboard, we have the Super IO near to the keyboard connector. Do you see we have here key B, keyboard connector, because this chip control the keyboard connector. Sometimes you can find it near to the ICH or the PCH. Here we have two motherboards, guys, pay attention. Here we have two motherboards. This is the first with SIU removed. Over here we have the second SIU removed because the SIU are responsible for many tasks in the motherboard. That's why we find it failed usually. So basically, guys, how we check if this IC is shorted or not, is good or not, using, of course, the multimeter, and by selecting the continuity option here, okay, if you have the, a digital multimeter, that's good, okay, by selecting the continuity option. If you focus here, guys, we have many ceramic capacitors around the IC, so we know that the ceramic capacity around any IC is connected to the IC, okay, in one side and connected to the ground in the other side. So if I put, for example, one probe here and check this ceramic capacitor, do you see? It is connected to the ground in this side and connected to IC in this side. Do you see this path here? connected to the SIO in one side and as you can see to the ground in the other side. I can even check any capacitor here for example in this as you can see side connected to the ground and this side connected to the IC. Do you see this part over here? Okay so all ceramic capacitors around the SIO are connected in one side to ground and in the other side to the SIO. So you can do the same for all capacitors as you can see one side good one side connected to the ground one side good connected to IC one side connected to the ground one side to SIO one side to ground as you can see one side to SIO one side to ground one side to SIO one side to ground here also connected to SIO this side to ground means this is good this is a good sign that this SIO is not shorted okay but if you find that an IC as a serum capacitor is shorted like this means we have here a short circuit it could be the serum capacitor itself about 30 percent or the super IO Okay, and of course we have another sign that justify and proof that the super IO is good is the power button like this one. When you press the power button and the motherboard comes on, power on means the super IO is good one. So now I will connect the adapter to the motherboard and check the voltages around the IC. Stay tuned. So we gonna use this motherboard where we have two chip, the EC and the Super IO, the motherboard, the multimeter, the adapter. So let's connect the adapter. Look to the fan. If the fan is spin, as you can see, the fan spin means we don't have any problem within the Super IO. This is a good sign that we have a good Super IO and good is so let's select 20 volt in the multimeter so 20 volt is selected if you have a digital multimeter that's good you can just select auto range so the black probe in the ground everywhere in the ground 
and let's check the serum capacitors around the chip. We have to fi find 3.3 volt. Here we have 3.3 volt. This one also 3.3 volt. We can find even 1 volt for the clock. We have 1 volt. This one 3.3 volt. This one 3.3 volt. Remember. The existence of 3.3 volt around the chip means the inputs and outputs are good. This one also, 3.3 volt. This serum capacitor also, 3.3 volt means here this chip is good. Let's check this chip also. The same. Let's begin here. This ca serum capacitor, 3.3 volt. This one here, for example, 3.3 volt. This one over here, 1.8, good. Also 1.8 necessary for the super IO. So remember 3.3 volt, 1.1, 1.5, 1.8. 1 1.8 is for enable, this is enable. And 1.1 to 1.5 for clock. Let's check this one here, 3.3 volt. Do you see guys? The voltages around these two chips are present. So 3.3 volts are present in all around the chips. Means inputs, outputs are good. Means these two chips are good. This is how we can test this kind of chip, the AC, the M dot control, and the super IO without the schematic. So by the way, for more in-depth information, and tutorials, check out my website, prospace20.com, the link in the description. And for anyone who wants to accelerate learning, you can join my mentorship program, the link also in the description. So please remember, where you find that ceramic capacitors around the EC and the super IO are not shorted, First, remember this rule. Every ceramic capacitor here is connected to the ground in one side and connected to the AC in the other side. So if you didn't find any shorted capacitor, means the IC is good. But in terms of testing, you have to find 3.3 volt and 1.8 volt, 1 .8 around the IC in all ceramic capacitors, about 90% of ceramic capacitors around the embedded controller and the super IO should get 3.3 volt, 1 volt, 1.8, 1.5 1 means the inputs and outputs are good. And also, as I told you before, this is a good sign when you find also 3.3 volt here in the switch, in the on off button here, or when the on off button is good, means also that the super IO, a good sign that the super IO is good. I can even check this button. Do you see here this button? If I check, I have to find 3.3 volt. So let's check this button. For example, let's connect the adapter again. So here I connect the adapter. Always the multimeter in 20 volt here because we gonna check 3.3 volt above 2 volt. Remember, always we select the higher value. So let's check right now this on off button. We have to find 3.3 volt. So the black probe in the ground, everywhere in the ground, and let's check. So let's check the side here. As you can see, we have 3.3 volts. Okay, we have here 3.3 volts in the side and also in the side. Let's see the side here. Okay, 3.3 volt here, 3.3 volt here, and here for ground. Okay, so this is a good sign that the EC is good. So if this video helped you understand EC SIU testing. Give it a thumbs up and drop your questions in the comments. I answer them personally. And for more in-depth tutorials, check out my website, prospace20.com, the link in the description, and my Patreon for exclusive mentorship. Thank you very much.
please don't forget to subscribe like and share see you in the next video